I'm Dr. Padilla, and today we're going to talk about proper file organization systems in R. If you have a good file organization system, it's going to save you a ton of time and energy so that you're not having to figure out why your code isn't working because your files are in the wrong place. Today we're going to cover first how to create an R project, and then how to create an R markdown file, which is really the best way to organize your R scripts. So let's jump right in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to open up your R console. And if you've never opened up an R project before, it'll look something like this. Now we are going to want to go to file and we're going to create a new project. And this R project that we're going to create is going to house all the files so that they're all contained. And if we move them around to different locations, then all the links will still work. So we're going to create a new directory. And within that directory, we're going to create a new project. And we can name this project. I'm going to name mine org example. And this is a really important part here. This is where your file is going to be saved. Right now, I have this specified as going out as far as I can, which is what this tilde shows. And then I'm going to go onto my desktop um, location, which is where this um, directory is going to be saved. You can choose where you'd like to save it by selecting the browse option and you can select on your desktop and your documents, wherever you want to save it. Um, but be sure that you know where it's saved and it's saved in the right location. The other thing I want to point out is this way that I named this file. This is a type of naming convention called camel case because it has a lower uh, case letter to begin with and a subsequent uppercase as we go. If I wanted to add additional words, they would all be uppercase. So it kind of has these humps, really, why it's called camel case. Another approach is called Pascal, which is to um, have an uppercase for every single word. And that's because Pascal is a proper name. So imagine that every word in your file name is a proper name. Some other techniques include this, which is called snake. It's where you have an underscore in between each word and also kebab, which is like that, where it's kind of like a kebab going through all your, your, your letters, a skewer going through all your letters. Um, you rarely see this type of uh, naming convention, the skewer. Sometimes you see snake, particularly when people are naming their individual files. Generally, when you see people programming, they're going to be naming um, using this type of convention, which is camel case or Pascal, particularly when they're making new functions. We're going to go with this and it doesn't really matter. It's just a convention. So whatever you do, just be consistent. And if you're joining a new group, for example, you might have a new job, just do whatever they do um, because it ultimately doesn't matter. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this project. Now we have some changes to our interface. Notice over here that you have a .r project file. That's what this abbreviation is for this extension .r p r o j r project. This is the r project that we've we have. And up here you'll notice that this is kind of the pathway to this particular folder. It is within the home on our desktop and inside of this org .experiment folder. So it created this for us right here, this org experiment. And inside of that, that's where we have that .r project file, which is great. So that's step number one. Now, step number two is to create a R markdown file within this folder. What we're going to do is go to uh, file new and down into R markdown. Now we're going to just give this a title. And um, this isn't saving it, it's just titling it. So I'm going to title it what, uh, using the same name as with the other one. And it gives us a few options here for HTML, PDF, and Word. This is going to give us an option to um, really knit or compile, package all of this uh, code in a way that's easy to read. And we're gonna select this HTML um, option, but it's really easy to move in between the three if you want to change your mind. So just leave it as the default here and press OK. OK, so it created a default R markdown file for us, and it gave it the title that we specified here. And it says it's going to be an HTML document, which is the one that we selected. 
Now, the important part is that even though we gave it a title, we did not save this file. The next thing you simply must do is you need to save your R Markdown file. And I know it gets confusing for people, but you must create it and then save it. So we'll go to File, Save As, and I'm going to give it the same name I've been naming the other things, Org Example. And it saved it here. So notice that they're right next to each other. And this file extension is a .rmdr markdown. This one's in our project. This one's in our markdown. I can show you also in the file folder, we now have these two files together. And they must be contained within the same file folder to make all of this work. OK, so hopefully we did that well. Now I want to point out some things about the this R markdown. You know, some tutorials will just have you code in an R script, which is fine. I prefer to use R markdown just to get you familiar with this um, code organization system, which is what most people use in industry in order to um, help the code be more reproducible because it allows you to give very clear comments about what you intended each bit to do. So the important part is that it's broken into sections or chunks. This gray section here is a chunk. This gray section here is a chunk. This gray section here is a chunk. All of this white stuff in between the gray is not actual code. It's just additional information about the code. It's just a text that you can that you can write. The code itself is in between these two um, open and close tags for this code chunk. So this is really what makes a code chunk. If I wanted to make another code chunk, I could copy that. I could type it out. There's also a hotkey for it, which is command option I. And that will make another code chunk for you. So the way these R markdown files work is a sequence of these code chunks. And you can run the code for each code chunk by selecting this um, run button here. And it will run just this code here. This is just to set up the document. So we don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, but we can scroll down here to look at a more interesting code chunk, which is this one here. If we hit this little arrow, it will run this code chunk. And ultimately, what we have going on is between these open and close code chunk tags, we have a function. And we'll talk more about functions and the anatomy of functions and uh, future tutorials. But suffice to say that what's going on here is we're summarizing a data set that's pre-built into R. And these are some summary statistics for that data set, which is pretty cool. It had this word cars within these open and closed curly brackets. And this is um, to name this particular code chunk. If you click on this option here, what you'll see is that there's different um, names of code chunks. This is code chunk two, which is named cars. There's going to be a code chunk that's lower named pressure, which is here. So this is the name of this code chunk. And this little extra part is, is um, indicating how much information to print after this code chunk. So I don't need to worry too much about that. But know that this part of the code chunk is the name. And if there's additional stuff that that fo is follows the name with a comma, that is indicating um, elements of how this particular code chunk will be printed. But the name is just there to to help you. <laughs> there's there's nothing that um, meaningful about the name within the code chunk. Now, if we run this particular code chunk, what it's going to do is it will plot this uh, pressure value from the uh, default data set that's already in R. And it makes this a nice little plot here, which is excellent. And this is really the basics of R Markdown. What we have here is code chunks. And we have some text in between code chunks. And it all needs to work within the infrastructure of an R project. Just to recap, we covered file organization systems in R. And every time you begin a new R project, you want to open a new R project, save that R project, and then create a new R markdown file and save that R markdown file. We also discussed some naming conventions that you might want to consider. If you want to learn more about programming in R, please click that subscribe button and I will see you next time.